Now, uh, you can't wipe out the hand that's beat. We're essential and key to continual operation and continual smooth functioning of a highly industrialized, highly complicated machine. And we can use that power, you know, if we ever get ourselves organized well enough to destroy that machine or to take it over. It is the capitalist system that's on its way out of history. And it's, it's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, capitalism rests upon utilizing labor. It utilizes labor and the production of things. Its mode of accumulation, the way it works, is wage labor for money, money for things. Capitalism can work and maintain itself to a great degree as long as the system is expanding. Even as it goes through crisis, it still expands. It has reached the limit of its expansion, and what's bringing a crisis is a new technology regime, a new methods of production that are fundamentally laborless. When the Industrial Revolution began, the benchmark is the invention of the steam engine. Hey, it will take another, what, 100, 120, 30, 40 years to hit the second phase of the Industrial Revolution, which is roughly called Fordism. The Henry Ford system, right? That's 150 years later. If we use as a benchmark the semiconductor as a benchmark, because the revolution begins in the late 30s, you know, and then into the 40s with the development of vacuum tube computers. But as a benchmark, let's use the semiconductor. Baby, it's only in its infancy. What's troubling is a lot of things that made Detroit great, we're doing away with. And that is the unions, uh, benefits, higher wages, uh, seniority, uh, job stability, being able to retire, health. Detroit had the largest number of individually owned homes in the nation. In Detroit, we made the highest wages on earth in the history of the world. Over the, the whole say, process, yeah. not just one class, but everybody. So it was a concerted effort over the last 20 or uh, 30 years to demean those kind of things, to demoralize, to dehumanize the workers. The society that I grew up in no longer exists. You live in a different society that's in transition. I remember not being able to ever go certain places downtown. That's a part of my memory and psychology. You know, now we're roughly 40 years into a desegregated society. As technology began changing, right? The society that was founded upon and based on old technology underwent collapse, right? When I grew up, it was popular to talk about the nuclear family, you know, the dead that work, the mom that's at home, raising the two point five kids, the garage, the car, and that was applicable for maybe the 1950s. It had a reality and validity. As the means of production, the technology, the technology regime began to change, it changed the nature of work. A steam engine is going to produce a certain kind of society. A plow is going to produce another kind of society. A bow and arrow produces another kind of society. A computer chip produces another kind of society. When something fundamental changed, and the means of production, the technology of a society, the society has to change. Nobody can stop that. Today we're experiencing the social consequence of 30, 40 years of subtle changes in the means of production. That is why you can't know how it works. You simply can't know it because you're a product of different circumstances. And that's why I'm glad you asked, and that's why I love you.